Then if we go over here to audio settings, do is uncheck automatically adjust microphone volume. And you can actually do low. And I believe this is because I have done like drumming where they think it's background noise. And then um and then the clients can't hear you. So to really play with these settings and to test them with people too, I'll attach a blog I found that says why they suggest these, but I think it's good to um to think about it too. You can also disable echo cancellation and that high fidelity mode. Those are important. So then you can turn on the original sound that your microphone makes and this should improve sound quality for you and then that option should be available for your clients and students as well too on Zoom. So the last thing I wanted to go over is some settings. If you go to your Zoom and go to settings, there's a lot of different options, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. Waiting rooms are great for security reasons, um, but you'll have to keep an eye to let everybody in. You can mute all participants when they join. Just kind of up to your group. You can allow chat or not allow chat. You can prevent participants from saving chat. Private chat um, in a group, you can disable that if that's something that would be better for your group for sure. You could put a poll, that could be a fun way to kind of do icebreakers with clients or groups. You can allow clients to share their screen, if that's something that would be helpful. And then the annotating and letting other people annotate allowing remote control and so you might have to go in and turn this on I don't know what's automatic or not because I've gone in and done settings um, so it's always good to go in your settings especially every now and then and check updates happen are you up to date what have they added I have turned on nonverbal feedback and that is this and that is if you go to participants it gives you all of this this is the nonverbal feedback so People can vote yes, no, and it's going to pop up by their name. Um, they could be like, hey, I need a break. So that could be really great um, kind of information for your clients to, to know and to have and to, for groups um, that they can access non-verbally. So that's a good one to turn on. The reactions, you can turn those on. Allowing participants to rename themselves could be important. Breakout rooms for different groups. So closed captioning, you can allow, but you do have to have somebody to type it usually. So they're not aut automated uh, captions, which is good to know. Virtual backgrounds and filters. So just a lot of settings and some might work for some clients, some might work for other clients. And so it just kind of depends. Um, requesting permission to unmute before a meeting, to have a little more control of people's microphones, all the notifications. So yeah, just a lot of good stuff in here. Again, I would really recommend making sure your Zoom's up to date. Um, there, especially this year with the pandemic, there were a lot of changes throughout the year, which affected sessions. So kind of being aware of what is in these updates, how will that affect your session? Is there something cool, like cool that they've added? Like this could be useful in the session. Is there something that you were doing and now that's not an option and how to kind of get around those changes as they happen throughout the year.